Hello, thank you and welcome to our weekly Fridays on FB. I want to thank all our audience who have been show, being with us for the past two months. I want to thank you and please share us with your friends. For those of us who happen to see this video and are seeing it for the first time, what we've been trying to do is showcase an aspect of Mansaware every week. And for those who are new to us, Mansaware is a custom made and ready to wear um, clothing company. We use bold patterns and vibrant Ghanaian prints. The production and the fabrics are from Ghana. And for order to deliver it, it's about 28 days. So thanks once again. And today we have an exciting show for you. We are going to show you and tell you the story of Toma beads. We call them, we use them Toma necklace, Toma bracelets. Some people know it as African beads. Some others know it as glass beads. So I'm gonna flip the camera so you will be seeing the product. So what you are looking at is a glass bowl full of the Toma bracelets. Behind are Toma necklaces. So the Toma actually, and that's what we're gonna learn, we're gonna talk about its history, how it begins life, and what it's used for. So right now, it's I'm just panning so you can see where we have the uh, earrings. So there we have them. So these Tama bracelets that you can see, and you will see individual ones once we get there, it's we actually it's made of the toma beads itself the glass beads and then it's mixed in with other materials and other um yeah other materials to create those bracelets so these ma uh, the masawar toma bracelets have been featured twice in the democrat and chronicles um christmas stock and staffers they featured it in 2014 and in two the 2019 it was also featured again but before we start talking about it, by the way, they're great stocking stuffers. The bracelets are 15 bucks, and the necklaces, uh, earrings are 15, and the necklaces range from 30 to 45 when it's a set with a bracelet or a set with earrings. So I'm gonna um, go ahead and tell you, basically we're gonna talk about two things. One is how to the Toma bracelets features in Ghanaian life. And two, how it's made. And then the third one is how we use it, which I've been talking about, and you've been seeing the products on how we use it. So it's there are like five main uses of Toma bracelets and Toma beads in Ghana. The first one is it's used in a health setting. And what do I mean by a health setting? Basically, the beads come in various shapes and sizes. And as you can see, this is actually a Toma, a glass bead. So this is the Toma. Here is the Toma beads. You see the different colors it comes in, the blue. Here is another one, it comes in white. And these are all the different shapes and design is done. It also comes in a variety of sizes. As you can see here, it comes in very, very tiny. So that's one way when I talk about health, when a baby is born before the advent of weighing scales, now babies will have a string of these beads around their waist, their wrist, and their ankles. And every week, parents would check. If the baby has gained weight, the beads will be very tight, so they add one or two beads. If the baby is losing weight, they take away one or two. And this way, parents would know whether the baby is gaining weight or not. And you know when an infant is born, the first 
few weeks is critical to maintain weight, right? And in Ghana, it's 100% everybody breastfeeds, which is really the best thing for your baby. Not only because it's like my mother will always say, the baby has been cooking its food for nine months. Why are you not going to give it its own food? Why use formulas? But anyway, that's one way Toma beets are used in Ghana. Now, because you have weighing skills, meaning every week, Women go to the clinic at least for the first three months to have their baby's weight and the chart kept. People now use these beads more decorative. So this particular one we have here, the way it's been used in Mansa where it's been made into a beautiful pendant necklace. And so we've used, um, it comes with earrings and this set is um, $45. We also do have it in other colors. And as I pan the um, camera, you see it does come in other colors and other sizes. So here you go. I'm gonna pick this one for you to see. Oops. Oh, it's tricky. There you go. See the different sizes it comes in? And so when the beads are made, depending on this use, the bead sizes will be very tiny for weighing babies, decorative, uh, for whatever the reason may be. So that's one way Toma bracelets are used in Ghana. Bear with me as I put things right back where they are. Oh, it's getting tricky. There we go. The next, another way we use these bracelets is um, ceremonial, coming of age. And at that point, the, some of them are pretty large, like the diameter will be, you know, some of them could be the size of this and they could be round. So coming of age, what do I mean? We have them here, Swiss 16 parties, uh, the Kinsa, um, debutant balls, that's all coming of age. And um, so those are used and normal teenagers with beautiful big ones. And it's still done in the Western part of Ghana. It's called the Krobo coming of age. Third one is it's used as a girdle. So the Ghanaian, traditional Ghanaian outfit is a skirt and a top. And normally before sewing machines and creating skirts, the, it would be more like a sarong. So you wrap it around your waist and these Toma beads were used as a girdle. So a whole string of them, which we call waist beads, like that. And so the sizes would change depending on the preference of the owner. So they'll go and buy it. And so that's how they were used as girdle. So my grandmother, or mostly women over the age of Probably 75, 80 will still be using a girdle instead of having a skirt done, right? So that's one way the Toma beads are used. And then, of course, as a, a beauty accessory, right, which we do have it here. So we have, if you look back there, we have it in various shapes. Come with a bracelet. I'm going to bring this over to you. You can see right there we have it three different necklaces, different styles. So anyone can buy it, it's a bracelet, you can use it. We use it here on Mansa somewhere like that. So you can see the little bracelet in it. I normally use mine. I use my bracelet and mix it with other fabrics and metals. So that's what we use. And then the last way we use it, it's as a display when someone dies and normally it's a woman who is 70s plus, when they die, they will have all the person's Toma bracelets, it will be all string up and it will decorate the bed post or uh, where normally you will have a bed skirt, they will have all that person's beautiful Toma that they've used throughout their life as part of the decoration. And that is just amazing thing to see. So how are Toma done, Toma bracelets? How are they done? How is the bead done? Well, they start life, believe it or not, as recycled 
glass. So I'm going to move to my computer screen where I have a beautiful picture of how Thomas starts its life. So as you can see right here is recycled glass. So this factory that I know where we get our beads from, they actually will buy the glass, glass bottles, wash it, clean it. So it wouldn't be any different than us taking our cans and bottles to Wegmans, except that this particular company buys them. And that's how Toma um, Beat starts their life as the glass bottles. So what do they do? They take them. One group of employees, the whole job is washing these glass bottles to make sure they are their most beautiful selves. Clean it up. So we recycle everything in Ghana. No waste there, I'm telling you. Everything is reused. They'll be cleaned up and then it will be crushed into a powder. And once it's crushed into a powder, they then fire it up in a termite clean. And a termite clean is because it has, it can heat up really, really high. So that's why they use a termite clean. They fire the pot it up. And so the powder would then become molten. They will then put the molten powder, molten glass really, into different shapes. So depending on what they wanna get, they will put it in different shapes. As you can see, this particular um, bead is shorter and thicker than this particular bead, the blue with it. Once they do that, they start putting the designs they want in it. So for whatever the reason, it, whatever they want to use it for, they put the designs in it. Once the designs is put in, it would then be fired up again until it... Um, I guess the, until it's finished and you have the sheen on it. So this is the fascinating life of Toma beads, Toma bracelets that we sell at Mansaware. And so it's done by, they call them beadsmith. So, but what's interesting is each beadsmith painstakingly, so you can see this one has a very different a shape, right? They painstakingly paint and color each bead and decorate each bead the way they want to. So you can see that. So it's hard. No one bead will be alike because it's all, it's very labor intensive, by the way. It's all done by labor. It's very labor intensive. I really hope you've enjoyed this show. We almost at the end of it. Can you believe it? Mm -hmm. um, I want to thank you again. And for those of us who follow us, we are, our next event coming up is Fashion Week. It starts next week. We are doing a show on Wednesday. And our doors open at 6. The show starts at 7. We're also doing another show on Saturday. I hope we see you there on Saturday. We are revealing some of our products, new products that we have, new designs, new fabrics, new materials. I want to thank you once again. I look forward to seeing you next week. Please send us comments, questions, anything you may have on this subject, and we will see you next week. Thank you.